moving on to our project, we our project is a, a system that monitors and uh, identifies identifies uh, different wild uh, different types of variables to predict wildfire predict and monitor for wildfires. Wildfires have become one of the most destructive disasters in the last decade. From 2010 to 2020, the, an average of 1,300 wildfires have annually been happening across 650 acres of land being damaged. Wildfires are also extremely can fizzle out quickly or spread out uncontrollably, consuming thousands of acres of land in hours. But the intensity of movement of wildfires ultimately depends on three areas: the, the fuel, the weather, and the topology. Now, we're moving on to our actual device and how we combat all three areas. In our actual device, as if you can see right here, we have three. We have diff different sensors. Uh, first sensor is our uh, air particle sensor that measures carbon carbon di dioxide. It can be programmed to measure something else. A sensor to measure the temperature and humidity. A sensor to measure the soil moisture. Finally, uh, the key sensor in our device is going to be these four different sensors, which are these are IR flame sensors. They send out, they measure specifically the intensity of the light around them to predict uh, to specifically predict if the if a of a, if there's a live fire in the region. Moving back to our poster, we structured our program specifically we structured our program specifically to make it a mesh network. A mesh network is a group of dynamically allocated nodes that can that connect that have general connection with all other types of nodes. Example, looking at figure number one, because we can see here, we can see that the if a node goes out, the node itself is connected to different type of uh, two other nodes. So if this goes out, it can then just send the data through this node, which then sends it to another node, third node, and it reaches what we call a sync node. A sync node seen here or this real life demonstration is right here these nodes are going to be able to communicate with our lore with our network but also communicating with our internet now returning again to to our poster, how these two nodes connect with each other, all these three nodes connect each other, through something called LoRa. LoRa is a, a, a low powered uh, radio frequency that is capable of transmitting data over long distances but just consuming around 5 volts. As seen again in the image, you can see that we only use an ESP32 which has an input power of 5 volts, but it still can transmit over long distances of what? Now, talking about LoRa and mesh networks, now moving into flow charts, we can see that sensors reads the data and then sent to our ESP32, which is powered through a solar panel and a battery. Now, moving on to here, we can see this is our ESP32 and structure of how we're going to power our device. This is our uh, container, which contains, uh, which is going to be is the container of the sensor node. We have a solar panel right here uh, that is then sends the information to this buck boosting uh, chip that is also going to regulate and boost our our voltages and amps to make sure that the node, the sensitive node, does not get over get, get burnt by an over over voltage. The data is the, the power from the solar panel is then sent to a battery, which is stored while automatically at the same time powering the ESP32. Now. The return here, we have the ESP32, and after the ESP32 moves across different nodes, it will finally reach a signal, which is powered using a Pi Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. The 2W is going to send our data to a to a cloud. It's going to it's going to send our data to a cloud storage. In the cloud storage, and this is unfortunate here, but in the cloud storage, what's going to happen is going to be determined: do we have a fire or not? If there is a fire from the IR sensors, as seen here, which if these determine that there is a fire, active fire, or the level of the level of the level of uh, carbon monoxide drops within a certain level, what's going to end up happening is that a, a fire will be sent to our alert hub, hub, which is going to contact the local firefighters or the local users of it. The actual audience of our device are two different groups, large property landowners or the national forest services, because we were this device requires large amount of land and a system to set it up. Finally, uh, for conclusion wise, we, we think we're adding a GSM, a global SIM module, and also running a machine learning module using from the data we add, and adding more sensors such as motion sensors, and because he, a lot of these wildfires are particularly started by human beings. So we're trying to measure to to see if we can actually see motion these sensors, and then finally we try to add, we turn the box. This box right now are 3D printed, which as seen 
is here where you can see these are, are in a uh, Fusion, Fusion 360, but these Fusion 360 uh, boxes are not pretty good at, uh, at being insulation against burning. So what we're trying to do is actually create a box for this judge. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Vicky for helping us design the product, Dr. Greg for helping with the technical inputs and setting up the sensors, the makerspace for allowing us to print, and the National Spark Services for giving us access.